Welcome. Welcome back to Watching with Styles. There is no better feeling, man. I am still on a high. It's no better feeling than to go into Neyland Stadium and whip their ass. It is no better feeling. Excuse my French. It's amazing. And especially this second half. And like I said on Monday, offensively, we shot ourselves in the foot on a couple drives. I'm not sure if Tennessee could have stopped us on Saturday. And then after hearing that Coach Grand messed up the formation on that second play that I documented on Monday, it all makes sense now because it didn't make sense of Josh Ali pulling across the formation. And not going a route. It didn't make any sense. So now that even makes sense. But this second half is really good football for the most part. You can't be perfect. I know fans want to pitch a perfect game. The other team has great players too. It's not going to be that easy to pitch a perfect game. And they got us on some plays. And I know we're going to sure this thing up for this week against Missouri. So let's sit back and relax and watch this second half. It's going to go by quickly because there's not that much to, to really dissect and talk about, I don't think. But I might come across some that I might want to expound on, but we shall see. Big thing come out of half is we needed to get off the field. Tennessee got a little momentum in the first half after, yes, Dougie, we, we basically manhandled him. I appreciate it. Thanks for, thanks for joining in, in and commenting. We need to get them off the field because they created a little momentum at, uh, before the half with that touchdown drive, which I think they had, not no thing, they had a lot to do with us and misassignments, alignment, Whichever, like I like I'm like I say all the time. I don't install the offense or defense, especially not the defense. So I can't tell you a hundred percent what's going on, but I have a pretty good idea. All my years of playing, I have a pretty good idea. And man, these guys have really come a long way with with eye discipline. Eye discipline is huge as a defense, especially the corner. Well, that's enough of me talking. Let's get into this thing. And I documented this on uh, yesterday with the, this first play, the first two plays. This play is the exact same play. Tennessee comes in trips with a tight end, with a H back. And why am I not getting rewind? Hold on, guys. 
Give me one second. Looks like I'm having some software issues. Let me get out of here and let me reload it to see what's going on. I think I was talking too much. That's probably why it's probably trying to tell me to shut the hell up. But let me load this software again and make sure we are getting the right thing before I call this thing up again. But as I was saying, those first two plays were, yep, I got it working now. Those first two plays were from the exact same formation. Trips with part of Trips was a tight end here. So we got one, two, three with a flex H back. And they ran the exact same play back to back. And like I said on the little quick hit on Twitter, watch these two guys. We twist up the, the coverage on the same play, and they got us on the on the second one. You can see Corker identifies number number two down here at the bottom. And that allows Boogie to set an edge. And with that, boom, you crash the party. No game. Now, oh, hold on. I'm watching the same thing. <laughs> hold on. We had again. I'm sorry for this. I got so many files in here. I'm not calling up the right one. I need to call up the whole game file. Where's the whole game? Sorry, guys. I'm I'm not prepared like I should be. Hmm. Apologize, my peoples. Make sure I do this right again. Give me one sec. Make sure I'm pulling up the right file. But so those first two plays, as I, <laughs> as I said, they were the same play. But we attacked it different. We ran different defenses, and and the we got a different result. Um, two one two nine five. Here we go. Now I got the right one going. So that's the one where Boogie crashed the party. Now, this one, Boogie is responsible for this, like, hook zone. And now Corker, from deep, has really contained. And because of that depth, they kind of get us because they washed down Hog Hoskins with the tight end because he's out leveraged anyway. The Hoskins is already out leveraged. So the, the tight end wash him down. And now Cork is coming from too deep. So same play, a little different result. But the key is we get the running back down. It doesn't matter how beautiful that tackle is. As long as you get his butt down, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. This play Watch this guy right here. Watch Davis. This is what allows us to get off the field. That's a good defensive call run blitz by Coach White. Davis gets skinny and makes that tackle. Get him on the ground. Fourth down. Now it's time for us on offense. Offensively, like I said in the first half, we shot ourselves in the foot when we was getting a little rhythm. 
So I don't think we got to run the plays that we really wanted to in the first half to attack Tennessee. We knew we had a very good idea of what Tennessee was going to do because they kind of showed it against Georgia. So now we come out, I think we ran like 25 plays in the first half, which is nothing. And those pick sixes will, will do it in for you. Great blocking by the O-line with this five-man rush with a little green dog to get six. This is a great pass. Now, to me, it's unfortunate that we had all this time and no one could get open. Josh Ali had to run an over route. This is Josh Ali. Josh Ali had to run an over route to even form a little separation. No one else. We got man, man on the bottom, could get open. Three-man route. That's tight coverage. Now, he's not wide open, man. But we still got it in there. It was close. It was close. That's a great throw, man. Now, we know we got him. I want to show you this. He is outside technique. I think I showed this this week, too. He's outside technique on Ali. He's beat. We know that these two guys are going to react on the zone read here. So that means all of this is open. And long, all this guy has to do is take one step. All he's got to do is take one step forward and he's beat. Now the problem is for me, this ball game, there's nothing there. And that's a great throw. Put it on him. Let him get some yak after. The problem I have is are we reading this completely or are we calling it? The great thing about the RPO is you're allowing the quarterback the flexibility to read this. The one layer in the game is an obvious read. But right now, Terry seems like he's looking at the defensive end and not the linebacker who would actually dictate if he's going to pull it. Nonetheless, big first down. Now, let's keep this thing moving. Keep this thing moving. Because, and I understand twofold. You want to protect Terry a little bit, and you don't want him to run every time. Because if you look at this game, he could be running every time. And the guy whom... You should be reading is him because he's unblocked. Look what Rig does. He double teams on that tackle. This end is unblocked. If he crashes like he's doing, Terry should be pulling this. Look, there is nothing out here. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> That's like another 30, 40 yard run. In there in man, if he pulls this, he might be still running. But I do understand that you want to give the ball to your running back some, but man, if you're gonna you're gonna run the RPO, let's run that baby. Another great throw. And as a quarterback, people don't understand that this is a better throw than the one earlier Ty Lee. Because you don't want to lead him into him. You want to stop this receiver right in that hole so he doesn't get killed by this guy. Because he's coming with some ill intentions. That's a great throw. You can't lead every receiver on, on, a, on a slant because you can get him slaughtered. This, this big blue wall, I think people expect so much from these guys, but 
Uh, that's another one Terry could have pulled, but such great blocking. You can see it from this end zone cut. And I just want to, I, I do, I know I did this a lot last year. I just want, want people to understand this. Drake has to snap the ball, then reach and seal this guy with no help. He has no help. That's ridiculous. Watch that. Now he seals him. Now I'm going to say this. That is a good little chip by. I don't know if that's Fortner. I, I need to get these linemen numbers down. If you watch Fortner, give him a little help. Give Drake a little help right there. To push him, then gets to the next level on two tolo. And now it's hat on a hat. We got a hat on a hat. It's ball game. Now that put us where we need to be. In the red zone, threatening to extend this lead. Nothing better. Now this is just a great spin move by by C Rod. Second and four. Now we move in the pile. Third and short. Great push. Great effort by C Rod. Now again. Are we reading this or we are just just know what's going to happen. I want us to get to fully reading this thing. Because that's a great read if it's a, if it's a read. Now, our receivers got a block. And we did a pretty good job. Now, they got a push on us this time. And this happens. We, we're not going to win every down. It's just impossible. Watch how we don't form another line of scrimmage from that black line. Watch how it's a stalemate and we actually get pushed back a little bit. That's why we didn't get that. I'm not, I don't I like that, as, that a lot. Yeah, Jamin is really, Jamin, 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 Jamin has really come along, man. Davis has, his run stopping ability has always been good. Dougie, but his coverage, his drops in coverage has been exceptional these last two weeks. And as a former DB, that helps us out so much because that, that clears that little dead spot behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. You want them to throw it in front of you. Make them patient enough to try to throw that five-yard dink pass every time. Quarterbacks hate that pass. Trust me. I played it. We, I, I hated that pass in high school. I wanted to push the ball down the field. It's hard to just fire yard, fire yard, fire yard, fire yards all the time. It's just hard. Now, I don't like the fact that we're, we couldn't punch this thing in and we're in third down. Now, I, I talked about this play. I might go into, look, I'm going to go into greater detail because the rest of this game is going to go by quickly. As a corner, when you get to college, and especially on the next level, let me put this on. When you get to college on the next level, you have to. It's impossible to just play corner just as an athlete. It's just impossible unless you're just an elite athlete, which there's not that many of them, to play corner without doing film study and understanding what that offense a player can do. When I played corner after my freshman year, and I learned from some from some really good corners my freshman year, um, Adrian Sherwood, Willie Cannon, and Don Robinson helped me out a lot. As far as just doing some technical stuff that they did, and I kind of merged all three of them into my, into my repertoire. But my sophomore year, I started to really get delve into the film study because when I was a quarterback in high school, that's all I did every week, five days a week. I met with my quarterback coach and went over film. So I, I kind of understood the, 
the aspect of studying film. But my sophomore year, I had three picks. And all those picks came from film study. I knew what I didn't know. Let me just switch that. By my sophomore year, I probably got to where I had a 60% idea of what the receiver was going to run. About 60%. That's better than 50. You don't want to be 50-50. All right? I was about 60-65. For example, that LSU pick I had, I was in trouble. We were in 3D, and LSU used to run this, this cover three killer, and I knew it. We ran in practice. And this is what I did. I'll come back. I'm going, this is what I did in practice. I tried stuff in practice. And people used to say I used to guess. And yes, you want to call it guessing. When we was doing one-on-one, I used my, I trained my mind to see if I was thinking right. So I would, I would say, okay, the ball's on this hash and they're on the top of the numbers. They running these three or four routes. And I would sit on stuff because I'm like, they can only run these three routes with where the ball is. And I got my confidence up with with doing that and getting having pretty good success. And then we go to to team and and defensive um, um, scouting when we had scout team, and I would do the same thing. We got a detailed scout report. We got a report said first and ten. And we went over uh, situational football every day. So I think. Tuesdays was first down. So first downs, ball on this hash, first and 10, they like to do this. And I will sit there and I'll study it. And I will set myself, okay, if I line up at seven yards, just going through the stuff. So when I got in the game, I already, it wasn't, I, hadn't, I didn't have to memorize it. I already had the feel of it through practice. So big thing to me, and I say it all the time, is you have to know situational football. Down the distance, alignment assignment. So, down and distance alignment assignments, third down and goal. This defense has shut us down for two downs. Now, you, as a corner, I don't think they're going to come up in here again because they just came up there in there one time and got stuffed. This receiver is lined up almost on the hash. Like I said on yesterday, there's not that much room for this. It's just not enough. Because these guys are right here. That window is really small. Now, you got to still play inside, but I'm thinking he's probably going to go here. Or what some of the receivers would do is they are widen you out with a crazy stem and then come under. That's the only way he's going to go inside. So I'm going to sit inside, but I'm going to leverage myself and get ready to Pounce on here. Now, what are you going to do now? There's no reason. Why is his head turned to the quarterback? Go outside, guys, and try this. Try to run with your head turned and see how, how much slower you are. Why is he looking that way? He should be spinning the other way. It's hard to, to, to explain it without physically showing it. But as a corner, you should turn this shoulder into his body and press him to the sideline. So then you can feel him. You can feel with the pressure on your shoulder if he's stopping or not. But this ain't going to do it. This thing right here ain't going to do it. It's frustrating even with opponents. Do it. It's like, come on, man. That's bad technique. Why are you turning inside? But I love the result, though. <laughs> the touchdown is always nice. I, I don't like the fact that we had to rely on a pass on third and one from the goal line to, to score a touchdown. We should have punched that damn thing in. Now, this is... Now we got some momentum. Now we have to get off the field yet again. Now they kind of, we had some very bad fits. Some very bad fits. And it's the little things, right? Uh, Dougie said Jamin did a, had a great game. But explain to me. 
unless this is part of coverage, why he's belling when this lineman, oops, when this lineman is firing off, showing you that it's a run play. See what I'm saying? Look at where Jamin is. Now, the reason why that's bad is because Jamin should be square is pumping this thing back inside. Jamin should be right here where square turn this down, run it back inside. See that? Jamin should be right in that hole. Right here. Oops. Right there. Jamin should be right here. And that's where they run. We had some bad fits. Now, again, I'm not sure. I don't know what the defense is called. I'm not sure if Jamie is supposed to just bail out like that. It would be a little strange to me if he does. And to me, if he does bail out, someone has to take care of his gap responsibility. And I looked at this quite a few times. And the only guy who could do that would be this guy, which I think is a long way for him to run to fit with square. But it could be because Jamie just bails out from jump. So they got us on some big runs. And to me, it wasn't they were out bodying us. What a it was they were not out physical. The physicality wasn't the reason. It was either bad fit or bad alignment or something. Now, we talked about this earlier with Boogie. We got to get our offensive linebackers to rip down a little bit harder. Rip that thing. That's pretty good. We got to get that ball out. Now, it does come out a little bit, but we got to be violent. You gotta be violent with that thing. But that's great. Now we got them behind the chain. Now, it's time to get out the field. Once you get someone second and 19, it's time to get out the field. And this is a great job by the secondary. Great job. Now, he's not gonna go to, to this bottom guy. But I like the reaction. He's not. Let's see if I can get it. You can see. This is a fake. He's not coming here. Because the reason why it's not. Because this guy would be. The reason why I know, it, know that. Oops. I almost lost my. This guy. Would be blocking here. But he doesn't. He actually goes into a route. But. Such great. Pressure here. That. It, Negates this backside screen. And what a reaction by Eccles. We just got to do a better job. We got to get Eccles on this train. We got to shoot our shot. You hear me say that all the time. We got to come and just shoot our shot. Stop this, that. These guys are too good. And they're going to shoot you, uh, shake you out your boots every time. Where to, where to run, Davis? We're going to come up here. We got to shoot our shot. Stop selling. Shoot our shot. Keep your head up. No man's land. Third and 18. Very good push by Hoskins. Watch how Hoskins beat up this tackle. I want you to see this. This is exciting right here. Watch. Watch Hoskins. Hoskins. Beat up that guy right there. Just watch. Boom. Great job. Which forced him all the way to his boys. Now it's time to seal this deal. Now this play looks more like a read to me. He rides. 
He rides the mesh point a little bit longer. Then he sees it right now. And he picks that thing up because he sees it. Right? He doesn't ride it that long because he sees it. Now it's time to put that thing on. And that's a perfect throw. I don't understand all any talk about Terry not being QB1. It's, it's, it's mind-boggling. See, if he's reading this, I would take that. Now, and we ran sort of, it wasn't an RPO. We ran the read option when I was in high school. And if that guy, for me, was coming and wasn't trying to slow play it, what I mean by I'm talking about this guy right here. This is the unblocked guy right there. If he's coming with any steam, I'm pulling it. But I'm not sure if they're reading this thing. I, I would like to know what's the percentage that they read. They truly read the zone read and the amount of times that, that it's just called. That one is a good give and very good running by C-Rod. Now, let's get this. We got to keep the chains moving. That's where to throw, throw your body up in that C-Rod. Now, this is one of the few times that someone other than Josh Ali runs this damn bubble screen right. I don't know how many times have you watched me in the first three weeks. These guys have been usually they hesitate and then they sometimes go inside. And I keep saying that. All the guys are in here. All of them. You want to catch that ball and head to the sideline. Get us five free yards. And that's what we finally do. Get to the sideline. We got us four to five yards. That's what that play is for. Now we're about second and five. Now we got a McLean in there. Don't quite get it. Now, this is, we got to, and I say this all the time, in high school, it's really more about coaching. You got to coach on every level. But in, in high school, coaching can win you more games than talent. If you don't have a lot of talent, you can still win games because of coaching. You might have a great system. You have these guys in your system since, Whatever grade, they know what they're doing when they get to high school. They, they're, they're not thinking. They're just playing. This is not a coach issue. This is a player issue. All Upshaw has to do. Let me, let me put me back on. So all Upshaw has to do is when he gets to the line of scrimmage, there's a judge on the, right on the line of scrimmage. All he has to do is reach his hand. Let me see. You can't see me. All he has to do is reach his hand backwards and tell him that I'm off the line of scrimmage. Then he can nod to you. Okay, I got you. Or you can put it down and say I'm on the line of scrimmage. All right? That's all you have to do. We had to do this as a corner. When I got impressed, man, I went up to, when I got up to the line of scrimmage, I looked to the ref and said, am I okay? And he would tell me yes or no. So then if I, if it's a no, I got to back up a half a step. This is unacceptable for us to be with these experienced guys to be doing this. He is covering rig right here. He needs to be off the line of scrimmage. And all he had to do, like I said, is just reach his hand back. That's all he had to do. Reach his arm back and say, okay, Mr. Ref, I'm actually off the line of scrimmage. That's all he had to do. Now, I'm going to show you from the end zone what I've been talking about all year. Tell me. Well, I got another view. I should have edited this out. I got to clean it. Here we go. They bracketing Josh Ali. You can see this, right? I hope you can see this. These two guys are doubling Josh. Now, we got one-on-ones everywhere else. Tell me. Do you see anybody open? Look at the guy down at the bottom get manhandled by the press man. Is anybody open? Ugh. See, that's why we need to get some separation as receivers. Now, I'm going to say this from just experience. 
I like I like the pass to Upshaw, but I actually like this pass a little bit better because he's even with that. He was even with that um, linebacker. Now he's done. All you gotta do is just lead him. Since you know it's not zone, there's no safety here. Just lead him. Just throw this ball right there. But Upshaw needs to make that catch too. That ball hit his hands. I won't designate it as a drop, but when the ball hits your hands, hey, we got to come down with that damn thing. Again, our defensive, defensive lineman, we got pushed out. I don't know if this is a young guy. I can't tell the number, but I don't think this is Q. But right here, we get manhandled. And when the defense is set up by that guy, Now he comes straight up. Great. That's we I'm we are so freaking deep at offense outside linebacker is crazy. And we got a freshman in a Neely, which I, I think is gonna be another stud. Weaver, Boogie, and Watson are playing some damn good football. And we got him in third and seven. Oh, it's third it's longer than that. It's third and forever. Get him on the ground. I'm going to just say this. Everybody says, you talk about, you can practice this all the time. Oh, form tackling, form tackling. But when these guys are moving objects, get them down. Tackling is not a pretty thing. Just get his butt down. That's the way to react, Joseph. He had a great game. These last two weeks have been really good football for him. Now, we are starting to, Manhandle their front. Now we're starting to manhandle their front. Great block by Drake. And we got a hat on the hat. Great job by Kennard. This is what like I said, a Mississippi State game, we were unable to do because of their scheme of getting one of these guys to the second level. I'm not sure who that is, the guard. I got, like I said, I got to get my numbers right. Watch that guard get to the second level and watch Kennard seal off this guy, which he shouldn't be able to do because he's – that defensive lineman is at least a three technique. So he's outside shade of that guard. Good chip. Look how, look how Kennard seals him. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. We shouldn't be able to do that that easy. Watch Drake seal the other tackle. See that? Let me see if I can go back. Watch Drake seal this guy, which he's more of a, looks like a one technique, which he's on the other side. He's in between Drake and that guard. Watch how Drake seals him. That's ridiculous. Now we got a hole. Great running. This is great vision by C Rod. Everybody says that McLean is like Benny, but C Rod is McLean is is not Benny. C Rod is Benny. Look at this seals. It doesn't look like much, but Kennard does a good job of sealing, I think, 51. And the backside seals on that, or the front side seals here. 
So we got a lane right there. That's great patience by C-Rod setting it up and then exploding through the hole. Slow into, explode out. Bam. Woo, that's pretty right there. Now let's score this thing, man. Let's, 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 let's end this thing. Good running. How much time I got? I don't want I'm going to do it because these guys got a little bit of, they, they got humbled a little bit last week. I just want to show you, just look at the blocking. I want you to just look at the blocking. Watch Drake chip 51 right there and get up to the second level. Watch the front side seal their guys. Look at the look at Landon and look at the guard next to him. Seal their guy. Look how Kennard fights across and seal the defensive uh tackle on the backside. Number 88. Look at that seal. Now we get Drake out to the second level on the linebacker. See that right here? Now there's only one guy free, and as any offense, our running back should be able to beat that one guy. Bam, and we beat him. Fell forward, got six, seven yards. We could have pulled this thing every time. We could have pulled it every time. Now we're in first and goal. Watch, watch this guy crash. He is doing nothing but crashing. Now, sometimes what happens, which can get a beat, is when he crashes, he wheels outside, or this guy comes down fast. Well, these guys are all looking in the backfield, looking at the eye candy, looking what's behind the curtains, and they all go the wrong way. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. Now we're just going to stuff this thing down, down that throat. Now this is what I like. First and goal, run. Second and goal, run. And, and let's not, let's not fool ourselves. We're not going to always get on the first down, but let's keep pounding their ass. We up 20, 20 points. Let's keep pounding their ass. Now that's a great run by c -Rod. right, right behind his big boys, push himself in there. They do not get penetration. That's what helps. And C. Rod reads the gap. Touchdown. Now, they bring in their young guys. We bring in our young guys. I'm just going to let this roll through. You can see, you can see that <laughs> there's a difference. Our young defensive linemen got some welcome to the SEC this week. We played them a little early. And then we plan them now. These guys are, are going to understand real quickly that this isn't high school. They pushed us around. We No gap responsibility by the nose. We're getting pushed around a little bit. Same here. They create another line of scrimmage. Just want to show you. The black lines are line of scrimmage. Watch how we're not able to hold our ground up top. Boom. We get pushed into the linebackers. Same thing. Great job by Vito. Vito is going to be a stud. We got, we got a lot of studs on this defense that are really young. Vito is a, is, is a stud. And the great thing about this is that now Brown's got to make that play. Now, now the great thing about this is that they don't lose eligibility. They don't lose a year of eligibility. They, they still have basically five years to play, right? They can, this is great job by Carrington. They can play four games next year and still have four more years. 
if they want to do that. So they can, in theory, play six years of college football. Another good job by Carrington. Playing the route. Let me see if I can, how quickly I can get back here. The ball is in the middle of the field. This guy. This guy. Oops. It seemed like it won't let me. Oh, jeez. Bad day for software, huh? So now I got to get, get that back up and get it back to the right spot. But we have some really good young guys, which is outstanding. Because like I was saying, this year is a freebie. This year is an absolute freebie. And these freshmen <laughs> can legitimately play six years. They're going to play this year. They're going to get some run this year. Now, just imagine they get some run this year, and then next year, some of these guys can um can play four games, and they're still classified as a red shirt. They still they can be red shirted next year. We're playing four games, which is insane. And then after that, they did. They still got four more years to play. Like I said on 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 the locker with my man Anthony White, Tuesday and Thursdays, nine to ten p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm like, what if? I, it's not going to happen, but I'm gonna just play the what if game. What if nobody declares for the league? Like I said, it's not going to happen. I I wouldn't even advise these these young kids. Not to go. The offensive linemen, all three of them should go. They're all going to get drafted. It wouldn't be smart for, for them not to go. So let's say we get everybody back and they play another year. We can have the whole team back. It's like this year never happened. That's the crazy part. I'm just talking to get myself back to the right spot. That's the one thing bad about this software is you can't fast forward quickly. So I'm trying to get there, folks. Just hang with me because I'm going to talk through it anyway. It's not that crucial. So guys like Vito, guys like Carrington that showed his ability to cover. Don't tell me this. Carrington has showed his ability. I'm having problems with this um, software cutting out at the end. Carrington has showed his ability. Just think about it. Jabari Brown was a starter at the beginning of last year. Now, it's hard for him to get time with the talent we have now. Let's imagine he still has some years left if we play the cards right. And he's experienced. He's got some, some games on, on his belt. We have so much talent, so much depth. We still have, I still haven't seen, I was expecting to see Mo Douglas a little bit more in that secondary. Still haven't seen him play as much. So much depth, so much talent. And this COVID thing has a potential to give us even additional years which is scary because the more time you in the system, the more confident you get, the more you stop thinking, the more you start just purely reacting, being able to use your athletic ability more than trying to, Ooh, am I doing it right? Am I in the right coverage? Am I in the right spot? Is my alignment correct? Uh, am I reading this the right way? All that goes out the book. Once you start learning the system and these guys are starting, the longer you in it, the just the better it gets natural. It's just a natural thing. The longer you in, the better you, you are with just reacting. Great play by Carrington. Oops. Let me get you back. 
So we saw the first play by Carrington. Carrington is playing this perfectly. He has help and inside. So he's going to let him go inside. He's going to keep this outside leverage for anything that's potentially thrown out here. Oh, that's that's the fourth down. But Vito is a hit machine. Look, he's outside leverage here because he got inside help. See how I was saying earlier how alignment when we scored a touchdown? Watch how that space in between. He's in the middle field, which is about the same as it was when we was on the opposite hash and he was close to the hash. This is about the same distance. Watch this. Watch how muddled that area is in the middle. He would have to throw that thing quickly. Now, we're not reading this well. We're going to the middle when we he's throwing the ball. But there's not that much space there. See that space? It's really tight window. Great job by Carrington. Now we get Joe in the game. Huh. Now, Dougie, I'm not sure how that works for scholarships. I really don't know. Um, it's an interesting deal, interesting problem to have. But the that'll be more of a financial deal by the by the athletic department to see if they can carry these extra scholarships. It's a money deal. But with the amount of money we freaking get, like I said last early this year, we got $40 million from the SEC last year from profit sharing. $40 million. The SEC, when I was around in the early 90s, mid 90s, the, the whole conference only made 30 some million. Think about that. Kentucky by itself got more than the conference were making in the, in the mid 90s. We have the money. We just got to budget it better. There is a way to make it work. It's just a thing of, are we going to try to make it work? If enough of these great guys want to stay, I think we'll try to make it work. Because it's not going to count towards a scholarship. It's more of a, a money deal. It's more of an athletic department money deal. I really, really like the possibilities we have in the next, what, five, six years in the running back position. Just remember, C-Rod and, and Smoke are only sophomores. And now we got Tisdale and we got McLean, who are, Tisdale's a redshirt freshman. McLean's a true freshman. And this year doesn't count. <laughs> so they basically like it, basically like they're at prep school. This is, we are so, we are so deep at the quarterback and the running back room. We're going to, just think about it. We just milked this clock for six minutes. We are so deep there. You know, Joey has a free year. Bo Allen has potentially six years because he's, this year doesn't count. He can register next year. Then he has four years. We are set at the quarterback position for potentially the next six years. With the quarterbacks we have in the room today, and we're still recruiting quarterbacks. Think about that. And we have quality quarterbacks. Bo Allen's going to be a stud. Gatewood is going to be a stud next year. It's scary. Very, very scary. Now that's ball game. Guys, look, I got us out of here in less than an hour. That's pretty good work because we dominated this game so much. And it really wasn't that much to show. You got these young guys, some, some reps in the game, get their feet wet. We whip Tennessee's butt. And this is about four years in the making. It's four years in the making, man. We should have beat them last year. Remember that play? We was on the goal line with one play and we couldn't get in, we couldn't punch it in. The year before that, we were a better team. We came off a Georgia game. And in that game, if you remember that, there, there was a long run before half. If we don't give that up, I think we have a chance of winning that game. We are better than Tennessee. And I think this Tennessee deal is just like the Louisville deal. We just are better than them right now. Now, Tennessee is supposed to have a really good recruiting class coming in next year. They're going to be freshmen. 
we should be able to kick their ass in in Commonwealth. I know it's the crow, but I still call it Commonwealth next year. You should be able to kick their ass next year in Commonwealth. So, again, man, I really appreciate you guys watching. As always, I hope you guys get some out of this. This we have to put this on a back burner now. This is up. This is a, the last. We finished the the bottle of champagne. Now we got to move on to Missouri. It's gonna be a good game. It's gonna be a tough game. Going back there after they feel like they got round rolled with the with the uh, with the late touchdown a couple of years ago. So gonna be interesting. So again, appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys have a good rest of your evening. And I will see you Friday for preview of, uh, of Missouri and my picks, SEC and NFL. Appreciate you guys.